Welcome to Brain Stuff, a production of iHeartRadio. Hey, Brain Stuff, Lauren Vogelbaum here. Sometimes good science can happen just by looking at a map of the world and letting your mind wander. For instance, observe how Africa and South America seem to have been very recently cuddled together, even though there are currently a couple thousand miles of ocean between them. Similarly, Madagascar fits perfectly into a little nick in the eastern edge of Africa, and the Middle East seems to be pulling away from the top of Africa like a corner being pulled off of a hot cookie. With a reasonably good representation of the shape and arrangement of the world's continents in front of them, anyone could easily assess that the Earth's land masses have definitely been sneaking around. The name for the southern landmass that once was is Gondwana Land, also known as Gondwana. But it wasn't just the shape of the continents that clued researchers in to its former existence. They've also looked at similarities among plants and animals that live across the modern, separate continents. From those clues, Gondwana was an idea long before anybody figured out how or why it worked. The secret, of course, being plate tectonics, an idea that didn't really start gaining steam until the mid-20th century. But a 19th century Austrian geologist named Eduard Seuss put a name to the concept of the supercontinent in his book, The Face of the Earth, the first volume of which was published in 1883. Seuss didn't come up with many completely novel ideas, but he did a great job of synthesizing a bunch of the research of the day to conclude that the southern continents and land masses we now know as South America, Africa, Arabia, India, Sri Lanka, and Madagascar had at one point in time been connected because... One, well, just look at them. And two, they contained the same rocks and the same fossils from an extinct feathery-leafed tree called Glossoteris. Austria and Antarctica would be added to the theory 30 years later. Gondwana was named for a densely forested region of central India where the first fossil evidence of the supercontinent was found in the 19th century. Wana is a word for forest in Sanskrit, and the Gonds are a tribe that European explorers first found living in the region. Even though we now know a lot about the mechanism by which Gondwana was formed, it's extremely complicated and still being investigated. There's at least one peer-reviewed scientific journal devoted entirely to the study of the supercontinent. It's called, appropriately, Gondwana Research. However, there are a few things that we're pretty certain of. First, Gondwana wasn't built in a day. The making of Gondwana was a long process, most likely through three major mountain building events driven by the movement of Earth's tectonic plates. We spoke via email with Joseph Mert, a professor in the Department of Geological Sciences at the University of Florida. He explained, During the interval from about 650 to 550 million years ago, various pieces of Africa and South America collided along an ancient mountain chain called the Braziliano Belt. Slightly older, but overlapping with the Braziliano, 750 to 650 million years ago, is the East African Oregon, or Mozambique Belt, that resulted from the collision between East Africa and Madagascar, India, Sri Lanka, and parts of East Antarctica. The final collision was along the Kwanga, Oregon, between all those assembled pieces and the rest of Antarctica and Australia, between 580 and 530 million years ago. 